All right, well, welcome everyone to episode 33, a special postpartum edition of Flat Web TV. Uh, as always, I'm Anthony, your host, and my special co host today is the next generation of Flat Web TV and Flatlander in general, Genki. Say hi. All right, he's busy. Uh, as always, we want to kick off this episode with Eframe's Flat Matters video pick of the month. And with Eframe being so busy uh, putting on King of Concrete, it, it took me a while to, to get him to uh, commit to one, but finally he did. And there were a few good choices this month, as always. But in the end, uh, his pick was the Matias Dandois and Vicky Gomez uh, souvenir from Hong Kong edit, uh, which came out just a, just a short, short while ago. Um, they've been in Hong Kong doing some Red Bull stuff and managed to put together this nice, sweet uh, edit just a few tricks outside. Uh, they both dropped new lines, new tricks. Uh, they both showed, you know, the fun-loving side of, of Flatland. You know, they're big contest rivals, as Eframe points out, but they managed to put together uh, a great, friendly edit with some, some fantastic tricks. Um, we did want to make sure to do a special mention of a few others. Um, the first one is uh, Steven Sarah's uh, Come Flow With Me edit. Just fantastic. This is, you know, single tripod camera, great um, overall riding, just uh, a fantastic edit, lots of uh, good flowing tricks. Um, another one that we wanted to make sure to mention was, well, one, many, really, um, Matias or Mateus. Uh, Beckman, I believe he's out of Brazil. Um, he, I think he puts out an edit every other day recently, but uh, this one that I'm showing now is uh, the garage edit. So he took a rainy day, turned a, a bad situation into an awesome edit. Um, and finally, one that we didn't want to go without mentioning is the uh, S&M Intricate Flat Mix. Uh, I believe it's seven riders, seven unique styles. Um, just fantastic riding from from everyone really uh s and m has got just one of the best uh teams out there as far as flat riders are concerned so uh big props to all those guys and uh you know awesome edits if you haven't seen them definitely check them out all right well while my uh co-host takes a break uh, i'm going to continue with the next story and that is a short recap of king of concrete went down um last weekend now um, this is one of the longest running, if not the longest running, um, overall freestyle contest series. I believe this was the 18th um, edition. However, it began uh, way back in 1988 with Eframe's dad um, putting this on. So the King of Concrete went down in uh, South Sea. And uh, we're going to go over some of the flatland results in uh, both expert and pro. Um, great turnout. Uh, it's one of those contests that I think is is a, is a destination contest now, and much like Voodoo Jam or maybe a Circle of Balance, the, the South Sea Contest King Concrete should be uh, a contest that we all put on our list to attend. Um, so big props to Eframe. He put up, uh, I think, a thousand pound uh, pro purse for Flatland, and I think it was also a thousand pounds for the park, I'm not sure. Um, but it, it's a legit contest, a long-running contest series. So let's get to some results. Um, in uh, the expert class, uh, podium spots. So in third place was the pride of Columbus, Ohio and quest rider Joe Sisman. Uh, Joe also was kind enough to supply this footage that we're looking at. Um, yeah, he, he nailed some stuff. It was, uh, it was great to see him to ride, uh, you know, third place, big contest like that. Uh, second place, Yinka Thomas, some unique styles there. And uh, first place in the expert class was Yannick Chavelle. Uh, congrats to all three of those guys, big accomplishment there. Uh, in the pro flatland uh, class, again, there was some, some good competition and from the, the look of the edits that I've seen, some, some great riding. Uh, in third place, Jean-Francois Boulian, some nice, Canadian representation there. Uh, second place, uh, always fun to watch this guy ride, Keelan Phillips. Uh, very smooth, very um, hardcore aggressive style there. 
Um, and in first place was Thomas Neuer. Very, very consistent, smooth run there. Um, what can you say? Just definitely a, a good, good pick for first place there. Um, one thing that I found interesting that Ephraim pointed out, and I love this, and guys like Ephraim and Michael Steingraber, they take judging seriously, and, and despite all the bitching that happens afterwards, they really care about it. Um, I did want to point out that he mentioned they went back and reviewed video uh, of the run, so it wasn't just a gut call. Uh, I think I remember seeing somebody pull this, and they get a placement for that. Um, they actually went back and reviewed some video, got it right. Um, so cheers to them. I don't think it adds a whole lot of time to get the results out, and you know, as much as a contest format would allow, this is a great way to judge. Um, go back, look at some some footage, just to make sure you get those results right. People, people just want the right results. So. Uh, Big props to uh, Ephraim for that. I'm definitely going to put that on my list. Maybe make a family vacation uh, to the UK and, and attend one of these contests one of these years. Um, our next story is actually an interview with uh, a couple guys out of Denver, Colorado. Um, you may have seen in the last uh, several weeks um, some Facebook posts or maybe a Vimeo video for reclamation bikes. And uh, a couple episodes ago, we had the guys from Remorse BMX, um, and now we're, we're going to do another interview with uh, homegrown frame building um, reclamation bikes. So we've got Jake and Robert on the Skype, um, and we're going to ask them a few questions about reclamation. Let's get right to it. Uh, first of all, thank you guys for, uh, for coming out uh, on Skype and, and doing this interview. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, the first question right off the bat, this is an industry with many, many frame choices. Uh, basically, why? Why start a, a frame company? Why not? <laughs> uh, essentially, we, uh, we'd we done a, quite a bit uh, building up our scene um, with Colorado Flatland Jams, and this just seemed like the next natural step is starting our own bike company, so we just took it and rolled with it. Yeah, and we, you know, basically we started with a prototype and really felt like it was a good product and really wanted to share it with, with other people and just went for it. Mm -hmm. uh, well, like I said, you know, there's no shortage of choices. If you go to Flatland Fuel, you can, you can pretty much pick the exact size, type of frame, style of frame you want. Um, so in a market with this many choices, what is special about the skidge frame, the reclamation skidge frame? Well, made in the USA, first of all. You know, that's one thing you don't see these days. And obviously the price is a little bit more than some of the other models, but we wanted to build a product that was quality it wasn't going to break, you know, wanted someone to have a frame for five to ten years rather than a year or two and, you know, something that was more back to the basics of BMX. I did notice that there are some very unique colors, you know, you might not see the, the standard black frame that every company puts out. Uh, who came up with the colors? Uh, I, I, I basically uh, chose those um, based on kind of what I liked. I didn't even want to do a black frame, and so we, we really didn't do a black frame. Uh, we ended up doing a, the trans black, which is what we call our Guinness. Um, and we just check, kind of chose colors that we, we really liked. Um, Robert's been attached to Cowie Green forever, so we had to do that one as well. And I was writing a purple frame, so that's where the purple came from. And then the other two were just kind of, you know, well, we had this beard kind of theme going in, so we just decided to continue with that. So that's kind of where it came from. Kind of wanted to co cover all the spectrums right. anyway, you know, it kind of gives everybody a variety, but away from the flat black. Right. <laughs> so um, we do see on the website that there are frames and of course some t-shirts available, but are there any future plans for, for other products? There is products in the future. We don't really like doing or, or telling anybody about them until we get them and then test them. But there is a lot of stuff in the works right now. We've got a bunch of new t-shirts and stuff coming out and yeah. it's, uh, it's coming together. Very cool. Yeah, so we've got some stuff coming down the pike, and, and of course, the one thing we have is we're um, by the time this come out, they'll be out too. Is uh, t-shirts in, in every color that we made our frames. We'll have a t-shirt of the same color. So, uh, one thing that we have noticed uh, on your website is the uh, Quest BMX logo. And back in the day, it was very common for for companies that had, you know, complementary products to co-sponsor each other. So, what's the connection with Quest all about? 
Oh, it just completely came together organically. Uh, uh, Danny uh, had actually contacted me about um, you know doing some sort of collaboration. He liked what we were doing. And the more we talked, we kind of figured out that we had the same kind of ideas about what we were doing and the same kind of ethos. And it just made sense. It, it fit, and so uh, you know we obviously liked the the stuff that they were doing, and and they loved the stuff that we were doing, and so we just uh, decided to cross promote. So if I want to learn more about the specs, hear about the company, maybe order a frame, uh, how do I go about doing that? Uh, the, the website, you can get all your information there, and all the contacts. Uh, you'd probably be contacting Jake more than me. He's more of the, the tech guy than me. So, But any information there, you can get us on Facebook, um, all, all of those, those avenues, essentially. Yeah. Reclamationbikes.com, and of course that's with a K. And uh, finally, last question, uh, Reclamation. Where did that name come from? Um, actually, we were just kind of going through trying to figure out a name because that was the hardest part. Um, anybody that's ever done anything like this before knows that going, finding a name is, is just ridiculously hard. Um, and I was just going through uh, names, or names of songs on my iPod, and Reclamation came up as a skinny puppy song, so we stuck with that. It works. It fits. We're reclaiming our sport, essentially. So that's kind of part of it, too. Well, thank you guys so much. Thanks, Jake. Thanks, Robert. Good luck with Reclamation Bikes, and uh, we'll see you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Very cool. Uh, I got to say that the, I believe the color is called Pale Ale, the, the, the gold over raw. Oh, I love that. I love that. The green one, too, kind of like the Kawasaki green, just fantastic. Um, frames look sturdy and uh, definitely uh, look cool. So if you're in, a mar in the market for a frame, go out and check that one out. Uh, now, before we go, I did want to mention some uh, upcoming events and a couple of teasers for Flat Web TV coming up. Uh, the upcoming events, uh, first off, we have the West Coast Flatland Jam. This is in Vancouver, British Columbia. Uh, last year I went, it was so much fun, perfect weather. Vancouver is an awesome city, and the riding is... <laughs> I mean, they're so quiet and unassuming, but, you know, Corey Fester, Corey Stratichuk, Travis Collier, those guys just kill it. It's so much fun at these uh, Vancouver jams. So if you've got time, get yourself up there. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, another one coming up, uh, this is a, a little bit more in the distant future. Uh, October 26th, it is the Guru Jam 2013. This will be the finals for the Amp Flat circuit. Um, hosted by Quest BMX in the Terradome. I mean, they're going all out. The space looks amazing. It should be just a fantastic vibe. Um, book your tickets. You got enough time now. Get, get yourself there October 26th in Columbus, Ohio. Um, and then uh, one that's a little bit special and a little bit closer to home for me is, um, well, if you're on the West Coast or really anywhere, you've probably heard of OSG, Old School George. Um, he's, you know, staple in the Flatland community, just loves riding, always has a good vibe and a good smile on his face. Um, you know, good, bad, you know, bad things happen to good people. He got mugged by some knuckleheads, uh, down in California a few weeks back. Uh, they roughed him up pretty good, knocked some teeth out, broke some ribs, dislocated shoulder. Uh, if that wasn't enough, they took his bike, they took his camera gear. So a good friend of ours, Dion, in uh, San Jose has hosted or has, has put together this jam. He's going to host it, uh, a benefit for Old School George. Um, I believe the fundraiser portion of it has already exceeded the goal, which is fantastic, the, the Flatland community showing some love. Um, and then, as you would expect, you know, some companies have stepped up, some people have stepped up, and I definitely want to give some shouts out, shouts out, shout outs to the following. Um, Sabrosa. Sabrosa, I love their stuff. Um, they are donating a, uh, a frame that will be part of the raffle. Um, s and is part of it. Uh, Risk Everything Clothing, part of it. Rick Allison and Eddie Fiola, uh, they're both uh, donating some stuff for the jam giveaway. Uh, the Bicycle Source, Agro Rag, you know, Mike Daly. Um, Flatland Fuel, and um, I sent a few Flat Web TV shirts and whatever Adidas stuff I could scrounge. So there should be a, a great uh, group of prizes for the, the, the raffle, and you know I know they're building a, a fantastic bike to, to get OSG a replacement, 
and a speedy recovery recovery to you OSG. Hope you're back on your bike soon. Um, you know, you gotta you gotta pick up the your friends when when something bad happens to them. Um, so, San Jose Sunday, September eighth. Get out there. It's at a skate park. They're gonna have all sorts of fun. Um, get on Facebook. You'll find it. Uh, just it's a good cause. Um, before we go, I did want to tease a couple things coming up. Um, I've been sitting on a couple of things for a while just because I'm lazy and baby stuff. Uh, but while I was in Japan last summer, I did do a scene report for Osaka. Uh, that's coming out. And uh, a couple weeks ago, we had Dave Nori up here in Portland. So we're going to do a short little segment with Dave Nori. Uh, be on the lookout for that in the next couple of weeks. Um, with that said, that is episode 33 of Flat Web TV. Thank you so much for watching. Um, summer's just about over, but you know, lots of good stuff still coming up. So uh, if you can make it out to some of these events, definitely, definitely get out there. Uh, until next time, thanks very much. This is Flat Web TV.